Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. For today's video, it's just gonna be a short one. I wanna talk about this keyboard here. This is an IBM Model F AT. So this was the keyboard that came with the original 5170, that's the PC AT when it first came out. This keyboard was a precursor to the Model M. It was a Model F, as in buckling, spring, I don't know, fancy keyboard that came with the original PC and PC XT but had a slightly different layout. And as you can see here, it's got the LEDs because this is actually an AT keyboard. So it uses a different protocol and this would work on any computer, even ones that have a PS2 port, like things that you might buy even today. You just have to use an adapter to switch this DIN connector over to the PS2 port. Same protocol otherwise. And of course, being a Model F, it feels freaking fantastic. F for fantastic. The layout is odd. It's a bit better than the XT version or the original PC and then the XT version, but still it's a bit strange. Caps lock is over here and keys are in slightly different positions. Yeah, escape key is over here. So that's, that's unusual. Anyhow, this is not the subject of this conversation. What I wanted to talk about is what's going on with the cord here. So if you deal in any kind of old retro equipment like I do, one of the problems you probably notice is that the cables that are attached to say computers and keyboards and whatever that's inside a box that is then encased in styrofoam, what can happen is where the cable is touching the styrofoam, you actually get some transfer of the styrofoam onto the cable. Now I'm not 100% sure the mechanism for this, but I think it's some type of a chemical reaction between whatever material the cable is made out of, which is usually PVC, and the styrofoam. It's typical that a case is made out of ABS plastic. And I think that reaction doesn't happen, but the PVC or polyvinyl chloride, I think it is, has some type of reaction with whatever styrofoam is made out of. Now, if you've ever tried to clean this off, it's actually quite stubborn. I mean, I'm scratching with my fingernail and yeah, it kind of comes off a little bit, but it's not easy. What can also happen, and you probably have seen this before, is the cable can be sitting on top of the ABS case of say a computer and then boxed back up. And you'll notice when you take it all apart, there might be what looks like burn marks or indentation where the ABS plastic melted. And that again is a similar chemical reaction between the cord and the plastic of the case. And that's obviously not the subject of this video. I just wanna talk about this styrofoam residue that's on the cable. So I was asking some of my friends and I was thinking about how we might try to get this off. And that's because this keyboard was in its original box and it's essentially in mint condition, which is pretty awesome for such an old thing. But I would like to try to clean up this wire to make it look a little bit nicer. Now asking around, a few people suggested that IPA, 99% IPA might actually work for this, but I'm skeptical that that's the case. And that's because if you spray this onto some regular styrofoam packaging, it's not gonna do anything. So I don't really think there's any reason why it would do anything in the case of this keyboard. For the sake of an experiment, let's just give this a try. So I'm just gonna spray some on this uh, cotton swab and let's pick this little coil right here and start rubbing. Well, okay, that did, <laughs> that did work. So that's kind of cool. Now taking quite a bit of actual rubbing action, let's just wipe this off. And you can see that while it helped, now that it's drying, it took some of it off, it definitely left stuff behind as well. Let's try that again, but we'll pick a spot over here. So we'll rub and there's definitely quite a lot of abrasion I'm having to do here. Let's just try this a bit better and then we'll wipe this off. All right, so yeah, I mean, it's certainly helping. And I mean, I guess with enough rubbing, it would probably scrape it all away. So the next thing I wanted to try was acetone. Now acetone is very dangerous around ABS plastic, like what your computer case is made out of because it will instantly melt it. But you can tell here that it's in a plastic bottle and it's not having any effect on this. And I was hoping to look for any markings on the bottom of this bottle to see what kind of bottle it was, but maybe this is some type of a PVC and if that's the case, then maybe the ABS won't have any negative effect on this cable because I'm pretty sure the jacket of this is some type of a PVC and most definitely the acetone will instantly eat away any of that styrofoam. If you just pour this onto some styrofoam packaging, it will just totally turn to goo and melt it. So I have some acetone in the cap here. Let's get a little bit on a cotton swab. I'm gonna 
move this away so it's far away from what I'm working on here. I don't want to spill any. And let's start on a piece of coil here. I'm just going to do a little bit of testing. I want to see, does it melt? I want to see if it has any negative effect on the PVC. All right, well, I think it will, or it does have a little bit of an effect. See, it sort of dulled it a little bit, but it definitely wasn't as dramatic an effect as if you tried to use it on ABS plastic. So let's try what happens here on this white part here. And yeah, that takes it off, I think, pretty dramatically. And if the cotton swab was turning a black color, I'd be worried it would be melting the cord, but it's not. Now the question is there, you can see there's a little bit of deformation or a little texture in the black there. Is that because of some kind of melting? Sorry, it's out of focus there. Is that some kind of melting that's happening? Or is that just the residual chemical reaction of the styrofoam with the PVC jacket originally? Let's try it again in this spot right here. All right, let's see here. Well, it certainly makes very quick work of the styrofoam residue. I don't have to put any pressure on it or anything. Now, is it cleaning it up completely? It seems to be having a beneficial effect, it's taking the white away, but the cord, which I wish were in better focus, is not as shiny as I think it could be. So let me put some 99% IP on that part there, try to clean that off, and let's compare how that looks. Definitely have to rub this a lot harder. All right, I've gone to a manual focus. So on the right side where there's still a bit of the residue is where I used IPA. And over on the left is where I used the acetone. Well, I'd say the acetone definitely takes away some of the sheen of the cable. So probably the safer bet is to try to use IPA. You just have to do a lot more rubbing to try to get that off when you're using IPA. All right, let's try out the next section. I'm just gonna spray IPA right onto the cord here. And we'll just rub this with a dry one of these uh, Q-tips or cotton swabs. It's definitely getting it off. We'll apply a bit more. use some of this cloth to dry that area. And yeah, that's that's relatively effective. Obviously, there's still more to do, so let's uh, do some more cleaning on that spot. And it's difficult because once you wet it, you can't really see where you've actually um, have the dots that are left. It only sort of becomes apparent when it's dry. Let me scratch it with my fingernails there. And there you can see we still have some residue. Oh, and look on the back here. I think this is just, uh, no, that's some right there. There's like, yeah, okay. Hmm. All right, grab some paper towel. This is just the stuff you would use in your kitchen. Let's try this with some 99% IPA on it. And I can rub the cord kind of all around with this a little bit better and use my fingernails to really dig in. Okay, how's that look now? That looks so much better. And definitely where we use the acetone. The acetone made quick work of it, but it definitely seems to damage the cable a little bit. So I guess in this case, IPA is definitely the way to go. Although look at that, it's like a smudge or something on there. Hmm. I'm gonna use some of this glass cleaner here to spray that part of the cord. Maybe that smudge, we can just wipe that off. Make this look all nice again, maybe. Yes, with that Windex on there, that looks pretty good. All right, well, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna use 99% IPA for cleaning. So let me go ahead and try to treat this entire cord and let's look at how it looks when I'm all done.
And there we have it. The cord is all cleaned up, has no more of that white styrofoam residue on it. Well, maybe it has the odd spot. No, that's just the shiny part in the lights. It looks freaking fantastic now. So even though I said I was only gonna use 99% IPA on there, well, it didn't take long once I got past the straight part of the cord over to the coiled area that I realized it was gonna be very difficult to scrub each one of those loops appropriately. So I decided to go back to the acetone. And you know what? The acetone worked really well in the end. I think what happens with the acetone is it eats away at that styrofoam and it leaves behind kind of like this sticky residue. And there's some of it right here I didn't fully clean. And it feels like if you rub it enough, it kind of starts to become an adhesive almost. And then what I did is after doing a pass with the acetone, I did another pass with the IPA and that actually had the effect of removing a lot of this residue that was left behind. You can see right here, I could, I could do another pass, but the initial pass with the acetone actually took away a lot of that lightness. So when you're not looking at it with a close up lens like we are here on the video, you don't even really notice that. And giving this a pass with the 99% IPA actually took away some of the stickiness that the entire cord had. It just feels now like a nice normal PVC type plastic cord. And from normal distance viewing, you don't see any of that white stuff anymore. So I think in this case, this combo of both the acetone and the IPA was the correct way to do this. And I probably need to do uh, another pass. Oops, there's that stuck under there. I should do one more pass just to make sure I don't uh, leave some of that residue behind. But I don't think that really matters. And I'm just really happy now that this cord looks a million times better. And of course, the whole keyboard looks freaking fantastic as well. I mean, just check that out. This thing is nice. Let's see the bottom here. Interesting, and I've never actually seen one of these up close, is this is all plastic on the bottom, which maybe is normal. I don't know. Doesn't really say anything but that on the bottom. And there is the IBM logo. It looks like it has the peel still on there as well. I think I'm gonna peel that off because I don't like leaving the peel on there because if you do, it can actually get sticky and leave a residue that's hard to clean. So using a plastic spudger, there it comes. Doesn't look perfect underneath. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this glass cleaner here on there, see if that cleans up at all. Nope, not really. This keyboard has a little bit of dust on it. For all, all things considered, it still looks pretty good. So there you have it. A little method for trying to clean these cords. I'd be very careful using acetone about around retro computer parts. Always test first to make sure that it doesn't start to eat away at this. If you put acetone near like a Commodore 64 case, it just immediately starts melting it. And if you use a cotton swab on some of the case, like on the inside, you'll see that right away it just turns to mush and you'll get a bunch of the plastic color on the cotton swab. So that's why rubbing it on the cord and I didn't see a lot of that black color right away meant that if it was eating it away, it was doing it ever so slightly. So it was okay just to very carefully try to get that white stuff off, which is what I ended up doing. And it ended up looking really, really good. And now this thing looks a million bucks again. So I hope you enjoyed this little super short video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual YouTube junk. You can become a patron. There's a link in the description below. It supports me doing this full time. Huge thanks to my patrons. And there's uh, special perks and stuff for being a patron. And you know, all the usual stuff I've said it a million times. So that is gonna be that. So thanks very much, John, for giving me this keyboard. And um, yeah, I hope someone else in the future finds this method useful. And that is gonna be it. So I've said that like five times already. So thanks very much for watching. Um, Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Boy, there's no editing, very little editing in this video. Terrible. Bye. Remember, yeah, talking over myself here.